here in Brockway with the Brockway boys soccer team that went to the PIAA semifinals. I'm Chris Rizzetti from D9 Sports. I'll let these guys introduce themselves, starting with Zane Pahala to my left. Zane Pahala. I'm Anthony Spazio. I'm Tino Anzana. I'm Clayton Hackman. I'm Austin Moore. I'm Hunter Allenbaugh. Uh, guys, when did you first realize that you had a pretty good team this year? Uh, probably all started during double days. We all like started conditioning really well, and we all started hustling as a team, motivating each other, just lifting people up. Uh, you know, I know that your coach, Rich Esposito, talked a little bit about the overtime loss last year to uh, was Sawickley Academy, and Sawickley is had been the two-time defending state champions, ended up the state runners-up, and but that kind of like gave you guys a feel that maybe you could do something special. Um, first of all, how hard was that loss? I think it really pushed us this year because we knew we could play with those teams and stuff. Losing 3-2 in overtime, I believe that was our game. I mean, I think that just pushed us and told us that we could play with anyone we really wanted to. Um, did that make maybe the training, some of the stuff that maybe isn't fun in the off season, maybe a little bit extra, made you push you guys a little bit? Definitely. Yeah, I would say so. Um, and you get into the regular season, and it seemed like outside of you guys, maybe District 9 was a little bit down this year. Um, how, how hard was it to stay motivated in some of those situations? Um, uh, sometimes. It'd be a little bit hard to be motivated, but once we actually start cooperating as a team and understand the skills and ability our teammates had, we uh, learned that, eight, and we helped them to make us for us to make the team better. Love being in a school situation. We had this with North Clarion last year too. You probably hear the hear the announcement over top, but that's okay. No big deal with that, um, guys. Elk really seemed to to play you as close as anybody in District Nine this year. What was it about the Crusaders that um, that gave you guys some trouble? I just think the effort they gave a hundred percent. I think not only did we not. I don't know if we played our hearts out in that game, but they really played us like it was their last game of the season. Unlike they played some other teams that, but they really gave us their their hundred percent, and we just couldn't sometimes find the back of the net. And uh, in the District Nine Championship against Port Allegheny, they beat you guys last. Year. I don't want to call it an upset because they were a really good soccer team, obviously. But I think you guys really thought you had a chance to win that championship a year ago. So, you know, we talk about the Sewickley Academy game. How much of wanting to get that gold medal in District 9 was a motivating factor? He's a motivation factor. Um, coming out, uh, did you ever envision winning a championship game 7 nothing? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, you're going into the state playoffs, and, you know, we've all seen the numbers. I mean, District 9, historically, on the boys' side, doesn't do very well in the state playoffs. What's the mindset of you guys heading into the state playoffs? Uh, I think Coach said it best. He just told us to go out there and have fun. We didn't have anything really holding us back. They were supposed to beat us, not us beat them, so we just went out there and played. Uh, you guys fall behind in that game. Um, what's the what's going on? What, I mean, what are you guys talking about when you're behind? Um, yeah, we had the game plan that if we went down one, we were going to move another guy up and see what we could do then. Um, when, when you tie the game, what's the what's the mood now like? It, it's our game at that point. No matter what's yeah. and, and then you get that the, the, the goal later in, in regulation. Just to describe this, you know, people, obviously you're excited, but can you describe what you're thinking at that point? We got this. Just drop it and defend. Just, just drop it and defend, yeah. That's what it's um, the second round. You know, now what's the thought process? You're going up against another WPIL team. You know where they're at and all that. So what's the thought process at this point? Um, we, <coughs> we didn't know this, but yes. Hunter plays with a couple guys from the Springdale team. He was saying how he kind of knew their best player. I mean, he, he was good and stuff. But Hunter said, I, we, think, we think we can definitely play with the team, considering he knew the, their best player. And we could, we could run with him, he said. He said that, it was that we, we can definitely win this game. So that, I think that gave not just us here, I think it gave us like, the whole team confidence in that we could beat that team. Hunter, was it cool getting to play against some guys that you play with? Uh, yeah, not only for the Springdale game, but one of my club coaches, his son plays on the Seat in the South team, and 
it was just awesome beating their team. And proving that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys get a, a chance to then go against Cardinal World North Catholic, and obviously everybody knew what kind of program they had uh, this year and where they were at, and you know what they had done last year even. Obviously, you go in and people are thinking you guys are the are heavy underdog. What's your th mindset, though? I mean, we just we just kind of thought, you know, there's no reason that we can't run with these guys. There's no reason why we can't be that team that can can at least compete with those guys. Uh, they had a goal, the guy that scored over 50 goals. Is there any special defensive thought process on them going in, or is it just play our game? Play our game, make them beat us. Um, the longer that game went scoreless, did you start feeling like maybe you guys might just be your year? Yeah. 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 Um, you, you have, I guess, a golden opportunity in overtime and it doesn't connect it and they score. And obviously you're disappointed, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> 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 oh, okay, you want to talk about that? <laughs> no, not really. That one's haunted me for a, a long time now. A couple of days. Um, you know, obviously you wanted to win the game, but to lose that way, is it tougher to lose that way or is it tougher to lose, say, 7 nothing? I think it's tougher to lose in, like, in overtime, honestly. Yeah. I think it's tougher, but at the, after the season when you're talking, you come back, you talk to your, all your friends and family, you say that the state, run, state runner-up who just lost 3-2 to the state champs, we held them to one nothing in overtime. Off of a cheap goal, I, was, yeah. I mean, not cheap, but... A lucky bounce, yeah. kind of. Um, what are some of your best memories from the season? Um, game winner against Seton right there. I had her first year kid. I'm a game winner. And, uh, state game, that's pretty cool. I thought that was impressive. You came over from football, didn't you? Yeah. Um, why, why make the switch? Well, I mean, I've been watching these guys play soccer since I was real young. And... I've actually always told my friends that it'd be like really cool to play, but I always thought I was too, you know, old at this point. I might as well stick it out. But um, our football team, I really wasn't gonna find a spot this year, so I figured if I start early in the summer, maybe I can find a way to get in every now and then in soccer. So I started way back when school just ended. I got a pair of shoes off him that were falling apart, a pair of shoes off him that didn't have a bottom on them, and I'd come to the summer practices and. So then I kind of just worked my way through it and learned from all these guys. I mean, guys, obviously he's your friend. You've been going to school with him the whole time, but like, just him deciding to come over to soccer, what was the reaction like? I saw it before. <laughs> <laughs> um, were you surprised at his skill level? Yeah. yeah he was he gave 100% every time on the field. No matter. He could be 80 minutes in, tired, and he was still giving it 100%. Um, 20 years from now, when you guys come back for Brockway reunion or something, uh, you know, maybe they honor you at a soccer game in 2037. I guess that would be if I'm doing my math right. Um, what, do you, what, do, what, what do you think sticks out the most? I mean, obviously you talked about the, the, the overtime, the, I mean, not the overtime, but the late goal against Seton LaSalle. But what do you think, you know, what would be the message that you think you'll pass down 20 years from now to your kids or to the players on the, on the Brockway team in 2037? Honestly, probably like if you have the right mindset to play with some of the best teams in the state, I mean, you can pretty much play with anybody, and there's a chance that you can win it. Um, do you think that it's important, not just for soccer at Brockway, but maybe soccer in District 9, for guys to see what you did and, and maybe get the mindset, hey, we can do that too? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Very um, what, what's next for the Brockway soccer team? There's a, there's a bunch of new young kids coming up, skill levels probably pretty good, but you just need these old guys to help motivate them and teach them a little more. Um, Anthony, for you, the fact that your dad was the head coach, that your brother, your older brother, your oldest brother was, a, was assisting and helping out, um, did it make things a little more special for you? Or is, was there a little more pressure on you being the coach's kid? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think there was really that much pressure, it's just that they always look towards me to push me more like each practice in each game to just uh, get my mind in the, in the game and just to push me because you know I can do better each time. Did it help that you were the third of the Esposito boys to play for your dad? 
Yeah, a little bit. Because my two older brothers, they kind of set a goal for me for me to try to achieve those and be my own. Um, Zane, talk about the balancing act between kicking for the football team and playing soccer. I know we had that discussion a year ago. We did a story on that. But just talk a little bit about the balancing act. Um, I mean, uh, my football coach and my soccer coach, I mean, they, they work things out. I mean, usually what I would do is I'd go to football once a week, and they'd be okay with that. I'd talk to my special teams coach, and they'd be all right with that. Um, if, I, if we had a soccer game, uh, say, Tuesday or something, like, I tried to make it to football, like, just later in the week, so I didn't interfere with like like soccer practice before a game or anything. They they were just I think it's awesome that both coaches just kind of worked with me. And it was really easy. Um, guys, when when you think about the the history of Brockway soccer and how successful it's been at the district level for all those years, is there any extra pressure on you guys to perform well? Um, kind of yes, it's just a little bit of pressure, but not that much. Um, when when you when you look at some of the some of the non-game stuff, so maybe the bus trips or the or, or the team parties or, or whatever, um, what what sticks out to you guys most about some, uh, just the, just becoming a family as a as a team? How close we were. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, the first time, this first time, this year, the first time ever we had to camp out on the turf. I remember playing hide and seek tag on the turf at like <laughs> ten o'clock. Running around with flashlights. It was, it was super yeah, fun. Yeah. yeah, we used to play cards before every game and on the bus rides. Any specific card game? Cinch. Cinch. <laughs> All right, you're going to have to explain to some people what Cinch is. At least you're going to have to explain oh. to them. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's get some cards. <laughs> What's the object of the game? Um, score more points than the other <laughs> It's a little, it's like soccer. Yeah. <laughs> but probably higher scoring. Yeah, not much. Okay. <laughs> and, and then talk a little, you talked about a camp out on the turf. What was that all about? Oh, it's just like bonding. Yeah, bonding. Because uh, back a couple years ago, they used to do it down in Fermantown. And they just like do the same thing we did. They cook out. They uh, Sometimes they go in the woods and make their own like forts and stuff and sleep in there. They just play regular games. But this was just an opportunity for us to like get away from soccer and just know each other individually and just have a good bonding experience. Uh, when, when did you guys get to do that? Was that before the season, during the double season? Days. Double, yeah, days. double days. Um, kind of way to break up a double days, too, because let's be honest, yeah. that's not really the most fun in the world, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> As they look over to their coach. Um, <laughs> what are some, do you guys any, do you have any stories that are good stories, good clean <laughs> stories that <laughs> you'd like to share with people about some of the stuff that went on? <laughs> Uh, good stories. Um, um. <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's a lot, but <laughs> they were sharing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, some things have some things have got to stay within the team, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> Um, well, guys, I really want to thank you for taking a few minutes of your time to sit down and have this conversation. Um, I'm just going to go around here before we end, and I want each of you to tell me what your individual favorite thing was, and we'll start over here. Uh, I think my favorite thing was the bus ride home from Dubois after we beat Seaton the South. Oh. <laughs> what went on in the bus ride home from Dubois after we beat Seaton? Oh, song. Oh, uh, well, it was the first time we, well, one of our friends had this really big speaker, and we brought on the bus with us, and we just played music really loud and had a great time. What's your song? Um, Won't back down back by down. Tom Petty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of fitting, kind of fitting this year, isn't it? Yeah. yeah that's what <laughs> oh man, I'd say my favorite moment is pretty much just being able to play on a team with a bunch of talent, and you know, making it this far in the states, and just having a good year for my senior year. Uh, I'd say my favorite moment was probably. The day we left for the semifinals game, with uh, our fans lined the streets in Brockway, and like, I mean, sometimes soccer doesn't get all the support in Brockway. It's mainly football based some days, but like this moment, we felt that soccer had all the support of the town. But talk about that. Talk about how the town sort of seemed to rally behind you guys the deeper you went, and, and what did that mean to you guys? It was definitely different because I've played both football and soccer. And, you know, football, they only play one day a week. You know, everyone comes down Friday nights to watch. But 
you know, especially with us having our all of our championship games, except for two of our state playoff games over in Dubois, there was a lot more people that would come to our games and, you know, you know, like he said, lining the streets and holding up all kinds of stuff and it was just pretty cool. But like even down the slippery rock you still saw all those people there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the I was I was there and I wasn't there. I wasn't at your game, we had another reporter covering your game, but I was at the volleyball game. Since we had two District 9 teams involved at the same time in the semifinals. And, you know, the thing that sticks out to me was, and I don't know if you guys saw any of this, but there was no parking at, no. Uh, b between between your fans, Clarion's fans, Maplewood's fans, Cardinal World, North Catholic, and I never think there was a soccer game before yours. People were parking on the sidewalks and, and all of that. It was... It was it was difficult and frustrating in one way, but it was kind of cool to see in another way the support that um, sports that maybe don't see that kind of support were getting all at, all at one time, and so I'm sure that you guys really appreciated that as well. Um, your favorite moment? Well, I probably would have had to been to see the Sal game scoring that goal at the end. But did you ever score a goal like that that late? No, not in a game that really mattered. <laughs> Um, my favorite memory would probably have to be win the District 9 finals game because for the past four years we've been unsuccessful, two times being runners up, and just getting that win in the finals just really felt great. Where's your gold medal at? My house hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys uh, wear them the whole way back from the bu on the bus yeah, and all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. to school the next day too. <laughs> <laughs> Zane? Um, probably with Anthony, the D9 finals, it was awesome. And then uh, coming back into Brockway, we got a fire fire truck escort. It was pretty sweet. It was like 10.30 at night, and we were just going through the town. <laughs> he had no respect. Yeah. <laughs> it, was it was sweet. It was just an awesome feeling. I always wondered, you know, how cool that would be to be on a bus of a championship team with the with the fire whistles and all that. It's, 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 it's awesome. Great, man. It's cool. And it, it shows that the community really understands what you guys accomplished too, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, guys, again, I, I really appreciate you taking some time today to sit down and, and just kind of talk about your season. I think it's a cool way to kind of get an inside look at you guys as people as well as, uh, as players. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.